Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mirai Club, a little bit different as you could probably tell for those of you that have followed the channel, for those of you that are new, welcome. Um, this is a channel primarily I started with um, documenting my the day in the life of living with a hydrogen vehicle, specifically the Toyota Mirai um, 2022 XLE that I currently own. And um, yeah, it was just um, when I first purchased the car, um, it was a whole new world. I wanted to document it. There wasn't that much information about the vehicle um, itself or just a hydrogen. Um, not much about owning and operating a hydrogen car outside of marketing material. So that's pretty much how it all started. Um, so hopefully uh, it seems like I probably dissuaded or yeah, dissuaded a lot of folks from purchasing the vehicle. Um, it was not that is not the main purpose. It's just to. Just be upfront on what you can expect when going into a relatively new technology at scale, at least. So anyway, um, trying this new segment, um, I'm going to be doing pretty much like news updates on the latest on hydrogen technology, um, whether it be technical improvements or just what's the latest. So um, with that, I'll start off with something light. Um, I noticed that there was a hydrogen the Toyota, Toyota Mirai owner, I guess, appreciation meetup at Huntington Beach not too long ago, hosted by uh, Toyota, which was really cool. I'll link um, that in the description. So that was really interesting just to see. Essentially, it looks like a Mirai dealership, not much aftermarket support, so not too much customizations, but nevertheless, um, cool to get the owners together and discuss. Um, so uh, regarding Toyota, uh, Toyota is just launched liquid hydrogen innovation. Uh, Toyota has introduced a liquid hydrogen, hydrogen system with a self-pressurizer self in the GR Corolla H2 concept. So uh, for those of you that don't know, um, well, one, the GR Corolla is a performance car. Um, the current one uses a three-cylinder turbo, and um, they've been testing a essentially a combustion style hydrogen engine um, in the GR, I guess the GR H2 concept. Um, but in this case, they've been testing out a system that maintains hydrogen at minus 253, uh, 253 Celsius, uh, preventing it from boiling off and escaping as gas. The self-pressurizing pressurizer increases pressure by utilizing boiling off gas producing usable fuel without additional energy. Um, this innovation aims to enhance engine efficiency and essentially, long story short, um, keeping keeping hydrogen at a cooler temp uh, to operate at a liquid form is more efficient potentially and it can store more energy. Um, this is according to The Verge. Um, next, uh, Stellantis STLA um, frame platform. So uh, Stellantis is, some of you may know, a huge, huge company that owns probably, um, I think it was Alfa Romeo. No, no, sorry. Uh, Stellantis, I know they own Dodge. Um, yeah, they own Dodge, Chrysler, um, and a handful of other brands. But one of the largest, they're one of the largest uh, car manufacturers in the world. Um, so they unveiled a multi-energy STLA frame vehicle platform um, supporting battery electric, internal combustion hybrid, gas extending, and hydrogen vehicle configurations. So essentially, um, similar to the Volkswagen, I, I want to say like the MQB platform, but instead of more like a that's focused on like a chassis that's can be utilized for multiple different vehicles not unique to volkswagen many car companies are adopting have adopted that concept i guess this stla platform um is versus pretty much something like that but they can use different powertrains and it's adaptable to that we'll see how far it goes um but apparently the ram 1500 ram charger um, equipped with a gas powered range extender can achieve 690 miles. Um, so yeah, it seems versatile. Um, we'll see how it goes. And with Stellantis quality, probably not very far. Um, but next, uh, for you Hyundai Nexo owners out there, this is, pertains to you. Um, I personally think if I was to go back and pick a hydrogen vehicle between the two, uh, the only two currently available, 
the Hyundai Nexo and the Toyota Mirai. I think the Mirai looks much, much nicer, but from a practicality standpoint, um, I don't think there's a comparison. I think the Nexo is much more practical, not just because it's an SUV, but the packaging is just more usable uh, for those of you that have a Toyota Mirai and have tried to utilize the back seats and especially the very small trunk relative to the size. I would go with the Mirai or the Nexo that is. I do think, again, the Mirai looks better. But anyway, uh, Hyundai is recalling nearly uh, 1,600 Nexos. Um, in the U.S. and Canada from model years 2019 to 2024, so pretty much almost all of them, uh, due to fire risk associated with fuel leaks. So that's kind of scary. Um, I know that's a big concern that comes up a lot in my videos. I don't know if that comes because I don't know if that's from people that actually know what they're talking about or just the general idea because hydrogen, uh, the hydrogen atom is one of the smallest. But anyway, the Korean automaker... Uh, advises owners park vehicles outdoors and away from structures. So easier said than done for some folks. Uh, pressure relief, a pressure relief system uh, in the SUV can break, potentially causing hydrogen leaks and subsequent fires. Uh, so no fires have been reported, which is great. Um, and affected uh, owners will be notified by a letter starting December 10th, and dealers will be replaced the faulty pressure relief device. So if you do own a Hyundai Nexo, that's an alert for you. Go get that done or look out for that letter and get it done. Um, especially with hydrogen, I'd be a little uh, concerned, um, not just because it's combustible, but um, burning a hole through your wallet because hydrogen is still, last time I checked, about $36 a kilogram, which is roughly for most, at least the Toyota Mirai. Um, I'm not using the figures from um, that marketing material, it's about 50, just 53 cents a mile, roughly, which is essentially, might as well drive a dually around. But anyway, um, some infrastructure changes. Um, California's hydrogen fueling infrastructure issues. This is a big, big one. Probably should have led with this, but Nell, uh, a company that is based in, I believe it's Norway, um, let me just get that right. But essentially, uh, I've covered this before, but the Nell company and Iwatani um, were in talks together, and I'm sure uh, the California government uh, was part of that deal as well, since they helped fund that. But um, essentially, Iwatani commissioned Nell Use their, use their proprietary technology in terms of distributing hydrogen, uh, essentially making hydrogen stations. Um, they were advertised to be reliable and whatnot. Um, as many of you know that try to use one of those stations, they don't work very well. And um, some of them are permanently closed. And if I'm oversimplifying things, certain parts are were not rated are not um, high quality parts or the tolerances are not good enough and they always fail. And that always results in fixes and the fixes eventually fail again. Um, so you're essentially just putting a Band-Aid on a broken arm. And uh, that has resulted in Nell, uh, I think Iwatani suing Nell, Nell suing Iwatani, and I'm sure the, the California, um, the state is also involved as well. But um, that is a continued problem, and I think a thorn in the side of hydrogen adoption. Um, I, I think one of the biggest culprits outside of the vehicles in terms of um, just, yeah, the infrastructure is supposed to be much more built out at this point in California, and it is not. And I think uh, it's fair to say that this particular um, issue is caused by the infrastructure, which Nell and, oh, yeah, I'm not going to pick sides, but... Um, it, that's a big problem. So uh, with that, that being said, I uh, hope you found this interesting. I uh, hope this was informative. And if you want more of this type of content, let me know. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly this. Let me know what you think and how I could refine it. But I hope you found this informative. For those Hyundai Nexo owners, make sure to get that recall done. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.